ground up in Arkham City. In Arkham Asylum, we added it to our Game of the Year edition. In Arkham City, as soon as we started development, it was, okay, let's have 3D through. And that means when you're gliding around the streets, your cape billowing out behind you, you get this real sense of power and of being the Batman himself. Yeah, so Challenge Maps is what we're showing here today at um, The Gathering. So they existed in Arkham Asylum, but in Arkham City they've kind of been wellied up again. So you've got your Predator Maps, which are around clearing rooms silently and quickly. We've got Combat Maps, which are about racking up the highest score in combo. And we've got Custom Challenge Maps, which allows you to build your own modifiers into a map. So you pick your map, then you can make it more hard for yourself, more difficult for yourself. But the big, really exciting difference is that you're no longer just Batman. You're Catwoman in the Challenge Maps now as well. And if you pre-order a game, you're going to also be Robin. And each of them have their own individual combat styles and gadgets. None of them are just skins of each other. We're really lucky at Rock City Studios with Batman to be in a position where people want to do it. Mark Hamill couldn't wait to come back and do Joker again. <sighs> and obviously with this game, we've got a much wider range of characters. So Mark Hamill's back, Kevin Conroy's back. We've got um, Nolan North, who usually does the voicing for Nathan Drake, does our, our cockney He's a penguin. So, Batman, you here for the cops or me? He was thrilled to be part of the project. Um, some have changed. So, Arlene Sorkin, no longer just Harley Quinn. But that's because Harley Quinn has changed as a character. In the first one, she's quite fun, she's quite quirky. In this one, because Joker is sick, as a character, she's fundamentally become that bit more dangerous and that bit more demented. And we've got a new voice actress in Tara Strong to do that. What's wrong with you, V-Man? You come into Mr. J's home and start smashing into pieces. Don't you know he's sick? It's still a narrative-driven piece. You've still got key points you're going to want to hit to unlock story parts, but the open world allows us especially side missions. So characters like Bane and Zaz and Calendar Man, they're there, but they're also giving you more background, so they're either telling you about events between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, or like characters like Deadshot, they're in there with a very specific purpose in Arkham City, and it all adds to this kind of texture of what is going on. So the more you explore, the more you'll uncover and learn about the story, but we're still main narrative driven. You're still looking at 25 hours for the main story, and over 40 if you're gonna 100% it. So Batman doesn't use weapons, fundamentally. His fists are the ultimate weapons but he does have his back belt of returning gadgets. So all the core gadgets you had at the end of Arkham Asylum, your line launcher, all that, the you know, batarangs, you're gonna have at the beginning of Arkham City. But you're also gonna pick up a lot of great new tools along the way. You're gonna have smoke pellets, you're gonna have freeze grenades, you're gonna have your remote electrical charge gun, which fires kind of taser enemies. So the back belt remains and the core gadgets remain, but a lot of it's kind of evolved. Even the core ones are not the same they used to be. They've all been improved.